All right. Um, well, cool. How many of you guys are, happen to be familiar with Hedera Hashgraph at all? Just to get a quick pulse. Oh, wow, OK. So pretty good group. Uh, fantastic. Uh, well, today I'm, I'm here to talk a little bit about more general things. And really what that is is trying to get to fair transaction processing. Um, you know, we're, we're all about creating this fair world uh, that's kind of public ledger led. Uh, and I think fairness is maybe one aspect that we're overlooking in considering these uh, potential distributed ledgers that we're building on. And so how can we achieve that? And, and what value does that really provide is a, a top of question here. So we're going to talk about what is fair transaction processing, um, kind of define it, uh, give us that problem space that we're solving for, and then how is it helpful? Uh, what are the types of applications and use cases that we can look at using this for and take advantage of it? And then if we want to do it, which I think we do, uh, how are we going to attempt to achieve it? Um, so what's fair really? And so this may seem simple on the surface, but you know, we have a lot of different ideas of fairness. Um, you know, Thanos could have one idea of what's fair, I could have another. Um, how do we, especially in this system that's made up of so many computers and systems around the world, decide what is fair really? How do, do each and every one of these agree on something and do so in a fair order and fair transaction way? And maybe just fair access, because that's really what we've thought about in the first iteration of blockchains is good enough. Um, you know, if we think about it from a simple uh, real estate tokenized use case where we're, you know, doing a basic atomic swap, maybe just people need to be a part of that system. Maybe we don't need some kind of granularity of fair ordering within that. Maybe that's good enough. Uh, maybe with healthcare and medical records that are static, uh, people just need to be a part of the system. Maybe they don't need that granular insight into what's happening exactly when. Um, maybe fair order uh, isn't really needed there. But when we think about fairness, I think what we should really be thinking about is kind of fairness like a race. Um, so if we're doing this 100-yard dash, I think we really want it to be like this, uh, where you send a transaction in, uh, the transaction is open to everyone. Anyone can submit these transactions, right? That's that fair access that we've been talking about. Uh, they're all coming from an equal starting point. Um, we're agreeing upon what the end is, and we're having a bub publicly verifiable order, right? We can all see who's winning the race. Uh, we can view the video. We can see in this public space who won. Uh, so it's kind of like these properties that we want to think about for solving this problem. And determine is this fair like a race is really going to be our uh, litmus, litmus test uh, for what we want to do, I think. So with that in mind, this is really the goal, I think. It's achieving fairness with fair access, which you know, public ledgers are great at, uh, but then also achieving fair order. And what we mean by fair order here, I think, is really getting down to the second to second aspect of ordering um, and not doing it at a, you know, hour by hour and understanding which transactions came for that, but really getting granular with it, um, which is helpful in a variety of ways, as you can imagine, right? Um, if we think about decentralized exchanges and the productivity of them today, um, you know, there isn't a great way to do a fair ordering of transactions in a de decentralized environment. Um, so something like that would be powerful. Maybe in gaming, uh, who got to an item first, right? We don't really know who truly did that today. We're, we're trusting this centralized process to tell us who it does. And in eSports, we're spending millions of dollars trusting that, right? And it, you can imagine over time, the, the rise and rise of eSports, we're going to be trying to invest more in understanding that at a very granular, fair order level. Um, so just another mechanism that we can do and, and toolkit that we can have for being decentralized and creating a valuable solution there. Uh, and then matching, right? Like one of the canonical use cases in the space that we're trying to work towards is like a decentralized Uber, uh, which we're very far away from, don't get me wrong, but having that kind of bid and asking, uh, similar to an exchange where we know what's coming in, we know who's requesting that first, and we're providing a fair access and order to those rides or whatever it may be. Um, so this is just a little bit of how we can start to think about the value of being truly fair uh, and start to integrate that into our systems. Uh, so definitely a variety of use cases that we can consider, a variety of industries. It can be pretty powerful, um, but it's not so simple, right? There's, uh, you know, it's often debated within many different circles of, of you know, what that granular timestamp is and, and who did the thing first, right? Uh, this is a common problem in, you know, not just our world, but others. 
And so let's go back to really that, that decentralized network that we're using and, and operating with. Um, so we have these variety of computers all around the world, um, and we need to understand where is that finish line? Who decides who crossed that finish line first? And we need to do it all in a very transparent way that we can all ta uh, trust. So let's start by talking about a leader-based attempt. And so for our first attempt, you know, we're gonna look at kind of a, a proof of work where a miner that ha solves that problem first is the one that gets to choose, or maybe it's a, a Paxos algorithm that randomly gets to take that first transaction in and ultimately is the one deciding that order. Um, so you're getting this kind of uh, system where the transactions are coming in and you're trusting whatever that leader's telling you. Um, you know, there's some faults to this method, right? There's a, a single entity that determines the order. That single entity may be able to say, oh, you know, let's delay this transaction. Uh, let's make sure that this one gets in ahead and prioritize that system. Ultimately, we're not getting that type of trust that we need. Uh, it can be easily manipulated and, you know, bribes and things like that could come happen. Um, so I don't think that's going to be good enough for us. Uh, what we could do to make it a little bit better if we want to try uh, is to add a little bit of transaction privacy, right, where maybe we're submitting all transactions and they're encrypted. Um, but at the same time, you can still have this metadata of the transaction. So how do you really understand, okay, no one else is going to be able to tell them what that metadata is, and they're not going to be able to figure it out and manipulate it in a way. I, so I, ultimately, I don't think this is the right solution for, for really achieving this. And then we could just say, okay, we're gonna randomize the order at the end here, and uh, we don't really care about that, but I don't think that solves the problem either. Um, and so fundamentally, I don't think this later-based approach is gonna work out for us. Um, let's start to look at maybe another attempt here. Uh, go forward here. And so we could start to say, okay, it's not this one leader. Maybe the, the end users want to choose that, right? Maybe the client is what ultimately decides it. So we start by looking at the transaction created time. So a transaction comes in, and, and maybe you make that right now. Um, and maybe that works out, right? Like maybe I do a transaction, you do a transaction, and we can see very clearly. Um, but ultimately, you know, what happens if that transaction fails? What happens if I'm in a bunker for a year and I wanted to do a transaction today, but then I come out of it in a year from now? How do we decide what is fair in that scenario? Are we gonna be able to say, okay, this transaction came in that year from now, should we reorg everything and move it back to where it actually happened from the client side? Um, it's very, you know, lots of failure scenarios here. I'm not even quite sure how we do it, uh, to be honest with you, but it doesn't account for these failure scenarios. And you have to end up trusting this single device ultimately, which is not, not so good, um, as you can imagine. So, okay, I don't think this is gonna be our input either, but there are some good things that we like about this, right? Um, we're trying to make sure that we understand that the failure scenarios that could occur, uh, we don't want just a single entity to be telling us this notion of what's fair and what's the fair order is. We want something more than that, right? We want multiple computers to be doing this, multiple people to participate. Um, we need something like you know, reaching a percentage of the network. So what if we consider uh, really just a transaction sending it in and saying, okay, once it reaches 100% of the network, that's what we're gonna say is the time, and we're gonna order it as such. Um, so this is kind of good theoretically, right? Like, if everything's working, it's all gonna be good, but you know, as soon as one of these nodes goes down, uh, what do we do then, right? Do we just wait for them to come back online? Uh, I don't think that's gonna work, right? As if you were running a node or you're this small group, you could say at any point, oh, I'm gonna go down and I'm not gonna take this transaction, uh, and that's gonna ruin that order. And so in those scenarios, like, what do we do? Um, and so we have to say, like, you know, I think we're onto something here. We want some type of multiple people participating in this ordering system. Um, you know, maybe there's other things we can do to, to make this work better, right? Um, so maybe we take into consideration uh, these things where failures occur, and we start to say, like, okay, for our finish line, maybe it could just be, you know, those that are active nodes. Uh, could that be our finish line for determining it? And this is pretty nice, I think. I think we're, we're onto something here. I think if we, we start to look at this and we have our, our nodes that went down and 
you know, we start to gossip about a transaction through the network. Uh, we're receiving timestamps for each of these nodes. Um, this is all good data. Um, I think, you know, if we continue this thought process, right, we're having some nodes here uh, with different timestamps across in this simplified view. Um, we're going to be taking into consideration these offline nodes and saying, okay, let's ignore those. Um, you know, we don't need those, that's fine. And then we have this rest of these timestamps, right? And so when we think about these timestamps, it's, you know, these ones over here, they're looking a little shady, to be honest. Um, so how do we account for that? How do we determine, of all of these numbers, what makes sense for us? And so in this scenario, uh, you know, we want a way to figure out these malicious nodes, or maybe they're not malicious, right? Maybe they're just poorly uh, set up and using wrong uh, clocks. You know, who knows? But the point is, we really want something within this good set of nodes that are, you know, trying to have an accurate time and very close to agreeing on that time. And so I think what we could do is take the median of all of these timestamps, right? Um, and, and we take that median of the timestamps, and we say that that is the consensus timestamp. And so this is pretty powerful. Um, we have our transaction coming in. We're getting this group of the network to say, OK, I think this is the timestamp, but none of these one single timestamps is right. What if we factor in what everybody else thinks? And then what if we want to say between these two good actors, these two good nodes, let's agree on that timestamp. That feels right to me. I think, you know, if we think back to our race thing, uh, we're getting the fair access. We're saying everybody can submit transactions to the network. We're taking those transactions. We're sending them throughout the network, this agreed upon public group that's viewing this race. And ultimately, they are collectively deciding with a very transparent way of where the race ends to say, yeah, this is the time. And we can therefore take these times and compare them to each other. And we get this really powerful notion of fair ordering within a decentralized environment, which is a hard problem. Um, and so I think this is what we, we'd like to go with. And I think this achieves our end state, right? Um, we're able to see that race take place. Everyone's playing on the same even playing field. And we know within seconds, uh, really, who's ordering who, like who beat who, right? Um, and so it's pretty powerful. And so with that, um, my good friend, a, a tool here who's sitting here, has come up with smarter words than I. And he's tried to define this in, in a really pragmatic way, right? Where we're saying, you know, OK, within an atomic broadcast protocol like Hashgraph, uh, we could define fairness of transaction processing in this way, right? We have the majority of honest nodes are in the network. And within those nodes, we're going to take the median time, time stamp of those nodes. And we're going to agree that that received time of an honest node is going to be between those two nodes. And, and with that, it's a pretty powerful ar argument, I think, for what, how we can define fair transaction processing. Um, and so that's, you know, obviously, I'm a little biased here, but that's uh, what Hedera Hashgraph ultimately does, right? We're this fast, fair, and secure public ledger. Um, and we are uh, trying to achieve that fairness prop property by being this leaderless system. Uh, that doesn't take any you know, single computer or entity deciding what's fair. Uh, it's fault tolerant. It's asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance. So it's really factoring in this bevy of you know, failure scenarios and trying to consider around those uh, to really guarantee that you're getting that consensus timestamp in really any situation. Uh, you're able to submit to any node, so you're, you're having fair access to the network. And you're able to see within you know, a few seconds that transaction going through. You're, you're not going to be subjected to bribes. And if there is a node that's not willing to take a transaction or process that transaction quickly, you're able to see that very transparently uh, and have the freedom uh, to use another node. So I think this is all checking the right boxes here uh, when we think about fair transaction processing. And so for just a quick primer, I, I know some people here are familiar with Hedera already. Uh, we actually launched, uh, not launched, but we made available to everyone our mainnet uh, just about six weeks ago, I want to say. Uh, we have 30 applications already live on it today. Um, so some really good momentum here. And they're using our network services. So they're using the cryptocurrency service. Um, they're using a smart contract solidity service. Um, that's the same if you were to develop on any Solidity language, which is really great. 
a, a file service that's able to be GDPR compliant is pretty compelling as well. Um, and then a consensus service, which is coming soon. And really, that's going to be that flexible way to add data and collaborate on that data very securely uh, in a fair order, which is going to be tremendously powerful, I think. All of that is using this Hashgraph consensus algorithm uh, that takes advantage of that fair transaction processing and really creates that uh, through the rest of the network. Uh, to be able to deliver these types of applications that we're talking about that can you know, really do fair ordering in this decentralized trusted environment, which can create an entirely new type of use case uh, than what we've seen in the past uh, in terms of you know, decentralized applications. And so with all of this, we're actually governed by a set of term-limited enterprises. This is uh, you know, currently the IBMs, Deutsche Telekoms of the world, uh, and a few others today. Uh, and they're really shepherding the project and, and trying to move it forward. Um, so it's not just all of these, you know, it's not just fairness that we care about, but it's really these properties here where we're trying to build this public ledger that's highly performant with, you know, 10,000 transactions per second. Uh, it's secure, as we mentioned, very fault tolerant. Uh, and then you're getting the stability and the governance uh, with strong enter enterprise leadership. And so I think it's with all of these things in combination that we're really excited about it, and a lot of the applications on us are as well. Um, and so here's a few of them. As I mentioned, uh, some of the council members that are you know, working with us on trying to deploy this and, and running some of our nodes today, uh, and then uh, some of the exciting apps and, and projects in this space that we're, we're really excited about. Um, and with that really concludes my talk. I think we're you know, doing a really good job of establishing a new era of fairness as a community, I think if we can consider you know, fair ordering as part of that, we can start to build some really interesting and, and powerful applications. Uh, I'd, ha I'd be happy to take any questions that you all have. Cool. Anything, anyone? All good? Uh, fantastic. All right, well, have a good rest of your day, guys, and then enjoy the rest of the talks. <laughs>